Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I got something, I get a lot of requests for them. Captive rings. Now, I know there are a lot of tools out there to do captive rings, and I don't use them. I learned everything my own way. I do everything my way. I've never actually been taught by anybody to do turning. What I've learned has either come from YouTube or me experimenting with what works for me. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a captive ring on this and I'm gonna show you how I go about doing it without any special captive ring tools, without any, without anything extra that you need. Just technique and a tool that you should have a version of if you're turning, which is a skew. This one's a little more acute of an angle than a lot of skews. Typically, my skews I leave at the fine one. That's the standard angle. That's the angle I use. You'll see why this makes a difference when I get into it. And there's a large skew for comparison. Now. These are ancient tools that I got from my, my father-in-law. But you came here to watch me turn, so here we go. Remember, safety first. Okay, now that I've got it rounded. Oh, and I didn't mention this is a blank from Cocoon. And they are becoming one of my favorite suppliers. You'll find them on Facebook, Instagram, and they have their own website. I'll link that in the description. Uh, but Cocoon Blanks is one of my favorites uh, that I don't make. <laughs> But uh, I don't have time to make enough blanks to fill all my customers' requests, so I like to use them. And I think I want to do two captive rings in it, so we'll see how we're going to do that. I have a few different shapes I do captive rings in, so we'll see which one looks the best after I get the end started. As you see, we start off with just two beads. This is like a standard shape I do where uh, I start the beads and then normally I'd go into two coves, but I'm gonna make these captive rings. So I am going to narrow down into these points so I can get my tool in there. If you're using a captive ring tool, you don't have to do this part. But captive rings tools, I find give you more of a band than a ring. I try to make my rings look like something resembling more of a woman's ring rather than a wedding band. Thank you. 
Okay, had a little bit of chip out there with a little bit of a catch, but it wasn't too bad. Changed the, a little bit of the shape on my the ends. So now I will show you how to cut these. With your skew, and this is sharp. I just reground it last week. Should be plenty sharp. Now this is where it's a little different. I take the skew upside down from your normal technique and you just cut right in. You try to get the angle just right to match up with the angle you're coming in because you don't want to dig too deep or you'll get too thin. Just trying to get those two lines to match up. You got to come back and forth. And then once it's popped loose, you move it around a little bit. And that'll actually help clean up the inside of the ring. Move it over if you can. I take the tip, come in underneath, and just clean that up. And there, as you can see, my ring's loose and I don't have any ridges underneath. And that will be very easy to clean up and polish. Now, if you're not doing, I have a buffer. If you're not going to buff when you do these, you need to sand completely to a finish before you cut it loose. See, I can buff these to a nice finish on my buffer, but to do it by hand is almost impossible. Now I'm gonna cut the, lip, the other one loose. Now for me, sanding is my least favorite thing to do. So, I try to avoid it all costs. But, we all have to do that. So, I'm gonna let you guys through the magic of editing, not have to watch this. Here we are, all sanded up. And now all it needs is a good polish. Now from here, if you're doing this yourself, you have a multitude of options. You can buff it, which is what I'm gonna do. It's the easiest. You can use micro mesh and try to get these to polish, but that's going to be hard. If you didn't polish them, the tops of them before you turned it, before you turned them loose, yeah, you're not going to get them polished up real good. So I'm going to buff it, so I'll bring you over here and I will show you how I do that. And this is my buffing station. Now I'm going to do my best to, to show you how this works, but. It's louder, and it's kind of hard to get a good shot, so bear with me. First thing you got to do is treat each one of these buffs. And I know I need a new yellow buff. It's been used and abused. It's a lot smaller than the rest. But you take your compound, apply your compound, each wheel.
as you can see, that's just from the first wheel. It leaves a pretty decent finish. Now you can see some little scratches. I'm gonna to have to come back in and get those. For the most part, it takes out almost all the sanding scratches on just the black emery. Now, when you're buffing these, you have to keep a thumb or a finger on them because if they spin too fast while you're buffing, I've had them shatter. It's no fun when they shatter. You just ruined what you were just working on and it really makes you mad. But as long as you keep a thumb on them, they won't shatter. And Alumilite is really good on polishing up just oh so well. And we're gonna go to the white diamond and that'll be the final polish. See if I can line you up on the white diamond wheel. just to wipe off all of the lovely white diamond compound that likes to build up when you're polishing. So, there it is, captive phantom rings. That's what I'm gonna call it. Okay. If you like this video and you wanna see more, give me a thumbs up. If you want to, you can go ahead and subscribe. I'll try to make more videos. Uh, if you want to see something specific, just drop me a message and I'll see if I can make a video on it. That's all I got for you today. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.